Odds are that if you spend enough time out on the pickleball court, you've probably looked at somebody else with the exact same paddle as you and noticed that there are some subtle differences. I mean, sure the face looks the same, but everything else like the edges and the handle looks completely different than what you got out of the box. So these people have customized their paddle to more suit their play style. And in this short video, I'm gonna talk about the most popular ways to customize your paddle and what they could potentially add to your game. Let's bounce. you're new to this world of customization is that pulling your paddle and playing with it straight out the box as is is known as playing with the paddle stock. This is how I prefer to play with paddles that I review because most companies don't include any of these customization items that I'm going to talk about and so I prefer to show you guys what you're going to get straight out the box without having to buy extra things. But the first feature I'll talk about is probably the most common you'll see even from people that are very inexperienced with paddle customization which is overgrips. If you've ever felt the handle on a paddle and you felt like the texture is a little little uncomfortable or you felt it slip out of your hands, this is generally what people use an overgrip to prevent. There's a few different ways to utilize overgrips and a lot of it depends on what type of texture you're looking for from the grip and how comfortable you are with the thickness of your paddle handle. People who are comfortable with the stock handle thickness will just take off the stock grip, which a lot of people don't know you can do, and will put an overgrip in its place. Whereas people who think that it's too small will place an overgrip or even multiple overgrips over that stock grip. Grips also come in a couple of different textures which are pretty self-explanatory by their names. A tacky grip should feel a little rubbery and kind of sticky, giving you this sort of non-slip attribute. The other most common grip texture are dry grips, and these should feel almost like cloth material, and they should offer you some more sweat absorption capabilities. You may notice some bumps on the handle of the paddle that I'm displaying, and that's not typical with a tacky or dry overgrip. I'm actually testing out a new type of overgrip that's growing in popularity with advanced players called a hesicore grip. Now, most packs of three or more overgrips tend to be fairly cheap, probably around $15, but you will wear through them decently quickly depending on how long you play with one. Hesicore grips come in at $25 for just one. However, it is made of silicone, so it's meant to last way longer than your average overgrip, which justifies the price a little bit. I'm personally a fan of the Lucky Ultimate overgrips, which are the tacky type, and my code Rafa will get you 10% off on those, which are already priced great, and they're trusted by a lot of really high-level pros like Connor Garnett. Moving on, the next biggest customization you'll see on a paddle is weighted tape. Putting weighted tape on your edge guards can add a lot of different attributes depending on where you place it. For example, putting it on the top to add stability or putting it in all four corners to increase your sweet spot, just to name a couple. In terms of materials for your weighted tape, there's two primary ones that are the most popular as far as I know, and that's lead and tungsten. But overall, there's two main decisions that you need to make regardless of which material you're getting. First and foremost is the width of the tape. A 13 millimeter paddle is overall constructed thinner than a 16 millimeter paddle and therefore has a thinner edge guard, and that would be more suitable for tungsten or thin lead strip tapes as opposed to the big lead tape rolls, which are a lot thicker, for example. And then if you really care about getting a good deal, you need to evaluate bang for your buck in terms of the number of grams of weight you're getting for the price. Let's say for example you're comparing a $10 pack of lead tape to a $20 pack of tungsten tape. You would obviously think that the $10 lead tape is a better deal because it's half the price. But, and this is just an example, imagine that lead tape roll is 10 inches long and has a weight of one gram per inch. Therefore, you're paying $1 per gram of lead tape. Now let's say we look at the tungsten tape, which is also a 10 inch roll, but is instead four grams per inch. That means you're not only getting each gram for half the price compared to the lead tape, but it's also gonna last you four times as long. In reality, the difference between the two is not that drastic, but the same calculation needs to occur every time you're comparing not just lead tape to tungsten tape, but even tungsten tapes to each other and lead tapes to each other. Each of these tapes can also be manufactured in pre-cut strips with predetermined weights as opposed to coming in rolls, which are a lot easier to determine how much weight you're actually adding to your paddle. The third thing I wanna talk about and my personal favorite paddle customization is edge guard tape. There's not much to be said about edge guard tapes and they're relatively inexpensive just like over grips but what they do is they protect your edge guard. This is my Spartus Ballista. It's one of my favorite edgeless paddles out there and you can clearly see by not having edge guard tape here on the edges that the paint is starting to chip from the amount of times that I hit it on the ground. 
And now when you're buying paddles for 100, 150, 200 dollars, it's really up to you whether or not you kind of want to protect that investment. But I personally would, and I think it's a relatively inexpensive thing to look into. I think the two best and coolest brands out there for edge guard tape are Fourth and Pickled Out, and I personally like the designs of Pickled Out more. And my discount code will also get you 10% off of a pack of those. I'll also put the link down in the description if you want to check them out. But honestly, a pack of three should last you a fairly long time. Edge guard tape is not really really changed out that frequently in my opinion. I want to take a second here in the video to thank Spin Wave Pickleball for helping me make this video. The paddle that I'm mostly displaying to show all of these customizations is a 6-0 double black diamond that I got fully customized off the Spin Wave Pickleball website. Obviously this is a different paddle but you can very clearly see the difference between the stock paddle like this Phantom that I got from Gherkin and the fully customized 6-0 that I've been showing you guys. Spin Wave is also one of the very first fully dedicated pickleball stores in the entire country operating out of New York. If you also like to shop directly from manufacturers and get paddles like the 6-0 Ruby which sell out all the time due to popular demand, it's it's a pretty good bet to go to the SpinWave website and they'll probably have some in stock. So if you want to play with or even demo some of these super popular paddles or you just want some help with the customization side, go to SpinWave's website and use my code RAFA to get an extra 10% off the base price. Thanks again to SpinWave and now enjoy the rest of the video. If you've ever seen white residue on a raw carbon fiber paddle even after just a couple of hits, that actually comes from not just the ball residue but also from something called resin which is a glue that's used to put your face sheets together. And now what you may not know is that there's actually a couple of options you have to be able to clean that and it helps maintain the grit on your paddle for a little bit longer. Your first option is a paddle eraser, which looks like this. It's a small rubber feeling block that you use to rub the residue physically off the face like an eraser. This is my Athos M1 Legion, which is a fantastic and much cheaper all core alternative to the Perseus. And if you look really closely, you can see a lot of that white residue on there right now. But you'll notice if I take the paddle, I'll take my eraser and erase, if you will, very gently, not too hard, especially with a paddle with design because you'll actually start to chip it. And if you look back at the exact same spot, it looks a lot more black and there's a lot less white residue. Now your second option is a spray from a company called Paddle Reset. I personally don't have any experience using that spray, but they're sponsors of one of my favorite podcasts, King of the Court, and I know that a lot of players do use it and have success using it to sort of restore the grit on their paddles. If you have personally tried Paddle Reset, feel free to comment down below and let people know how it worked out for you. And also to be clear, these are only for use on raw carbon fiber paddles. I would never use, for example, a paddle eraser on a paint grit paddle like the Spartus Ballista I showed earlier because you will chip the paint. So there you have it. Those are the four main customizations or ways to help improve your paddle performance in a lot of different ways. And if you integrate all of them together, you'll get a result that looks a little bit like this. So notice that if you think the lead tape or tungsten tape on the edges looks ugly, you can simply cover it with the edge guard tape and it looks like it's not there at all and it looks awesome. Any discounts I have for brands that have some of these customizations, like I said before, will be linked down below. And let me know if you have tried or will try any of these techniques on your own paddle. All right, guys, remember to like and subscribe and comment down below if you want to see more videos like this about general information about paddles and pickleball, or if this video was helpful to you at all. Thank you so, so, so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.